is the result of taking something from outside to inside. The happiness is the result of giving something from inside to outside. Dr. Nader Bhutto is a world-renowned medical doctor who has worked to fill the gap of traditional medicine with a unified, integrative approach. He'll share his groundbreaking methods that treat the mind, body, and soul, isolating psychological conflicts which can erode vital energy, leading to physical disease. And his whole mindset is we gotta take care of the pipes, but we also gotta say, what's the cause of those challenges in the first place? And it's usually psychological conflict, right? Something inside you, some stress inside you that triggers that. And so instead of just looking at the mechanics, he looks at the spirit as well. And he's developed a really unique approach to integrated medicine that's a unified theory for integrated medicine. Love is the best way to live. Happiness is our sign that we are going in the right path. And light is our purpose. We came from the light and we will come back to the light. All right, let's give a huge platinum partner welcome to Dr. Buto. Come on, let him hear you. Welcome, Dr. Buto. Thank you very much. Thank you for Tony and for Sage. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for the invitation. I am honored to be with you today. Well, um, I'm happy to, to share with you today my experience in spirituality and medicine together. Actually, we will see that we have the possibility to integrate everything together in one theory. So today we will see the uh, um, importance of spirituality in medicine and how we can change the paradigm that we have today. And we, we are passing a very important period with the coronavirus. And this period will be, um, have a, a big impact for changing the paradigm. So the, the method that I develop, I call it unified integrative medicine. Uh, it's not just to, to put many things together, uh, but is to integrate really integration between, uh, actually between body, psyche, and soul and to unify everything under the same umbrella, under the same um, uh, theory and model. And the first question, when a client come to me, I ask the, this question, what is the purpose of your life? And 99.9% .9 of the people, they don't know exactly why they came to life. And the second question is, who you are? So these two questions are the base that we should answer in order to be happy in our life, to understand what exactly and why we came to this life. So we, we, we didn't came to life just to have a meaning. Um, but rather about becoming your best self as you move through the life. And the question is, who is yourself? Who you are? So what we are, uh, we can understand that we are a part of this universe. And at the same time, the universe is a part, we can find it inside ourselves. So we want to understand this um, uh, play between the universe and ourselves, and we can uh, divide the, the reality actually in three parts. The first part is the information. The information we find the quantum realm and the spiritual realm uh, in, the, in the information. So these realms are not energy and a lot of confusion are made out there uh, between information and energy, because the information is not able to make work. While the energy, we have four forces that are well known in physics. 
which are energy, the strong force, the weak force, the electromagnetic force, and gravitation. These are four forces in physics, and we uh, call this energy. Uh, the other things, when we speak about, for example, uh, soul, we cannot say that the soul itself, without specifying what is soul, that is only energy, because we, we find that the soul is made from information and energy. And the third part of the universe is the matter. So we have information, we have energy, and we have matter. And if we look to the cosmological model, we understand that 73% of our universe is made of dark energy. It's energy that makes the universe expand without knowing exactly what is this energy made of. So we can feel its effect, but we cannot know exactly what it's made from. The other part of the universe is 23% of the universe is made of dark matter. The dark matter is made of virtual particles, which are appear and disappear, so we cannot measure it, because if we want to measure this matter, it disappears uh, immediately. But it has a, its effect and absorb radiation and has effect on matter. And only 4% of our reality is made of matter and atoms. So if we look in our reality, we will see that we have uh, two realities that are, that are uh, uh, treated from one side, from the modern science, treat the physical reality. And all the physical science actually are concentrated and focalized only in 4% of our reality. Because most of our reality is, um, we can find it in psychological and spiritual uh, reality. In fact, all our thoughts, imaginations, intuition, fantasy, and dreams actually are not in the matter. So it's not a study and there's no research in the modern uh, uh, science on this reality. However, we find a lot of information about this reality in ancient cultures, in the Chinese, in the uh, uh, Indian cultures, in, in uh, different uh, the religious. So we can find information about this reality. Uh, it's, that's right, it's not a physical reality, so we cannot say that it's not scientific to treat this reality. And what we should do, actually, is to compare these two realities and to understand actually that we can find a common pathway between these two realities and we can construct a new theory, new model that integrate between these things with, with one um, a coherent uh, theory. Now, the modern science based on hypothesis, theories, and experimental observation and evidence. And it's subjected to revision and has character of objectivity. While the religion and spirituality actually based upon the uh, faith, faith in God, faith in the religion, and which accept as truth may not involve conceptual understanding, but based on feelings. So you feel the faith in your heart. You shouldn't discuss about its nature. It's something terminal, self-contained, as not subjected to revisions. So you cannot uh, doubt about its presence. There's no need to have evidence about the presence of God, for example, as a character of permanence. So we can see that there are, it seems that there are two realities completely separated and there's no way to connect between them. However, um, we can join between these two directions, these two currents um, by finding the holistic model. And we, when we 
if, when we speak about holistic model, a systemic model where multiple biological, psychological, spiritual, and social factors are seen as inter interlinked. So you cannot uh, separate one thing from the other because I am not a biological machine. I am a spiritual entity that using this physical body in order to make a fellowship in this, in this life. So what I did actually is to construct a universal unified theory. And this universal unified theory actually um, answer and it based upon the uh, basis of the theory of everything which describes a broad variety of phenomena using a few arbitrary parameters. And when we are speaking about, about arbitrary parameters, you know, it's like in physics, when you use the constants in the formulation in order to have the right answer and the right uh, result. So if we will deal with the theory that the theory of everything, uh, according to Karl Popper, one of the greatest uh, philosopher in modern physics, said the right theory shouldn't have or sh should have a few arbitrary parameters. And it is capable of positively predicting results of future observation. And I present you universal unified theory um, that contain actually everything. It is based upon seven universal laws. And these laws give us the holistic model from which we derive the unified integrative medicine. And from this, we have diagnosis that is different than the uh, uh, actual diagnosis that we have in modern medicine because we take in consideration the soul and the psyche that are the most important part of the diagnosis, as we will see. So we are able to prevent the diseases because in medicine right now, we cannot prevent disease because we don't understand what the disease is, what the cause of the disease. So we are dealing with the symptoms and we don't want the uh, uh, symptoms to be there and we eradicate the disease by surgery or by uh, uh, drugs without knowing the cause of the disease. So we have a therapy as well, and I will speak about the therapy, how we can renew the health, which is not only the absence of disease, health as well-being. So when we are speaking about unified universal theory, uh, we should have uh, the uh, logical and coherence in the theory and should, should be no contradictions among its hypotheses and statements resulting from them. So if the theory is right, should be right for everything when we are speaking about universal theory. It's right in all the realm, in the spiritual, in the quantum field, in the um, uh, physical uh, part, in the psychological, the same theory, we should use it everywhere. So to do this, I wrote different books in Hebrew, in Italian, in English, and I wrote as well articles that were published in peer review journals. So these ideas, these theories, it's not just something hypothetical that but it's, it's something that new. Here, for example, I uh, published a paper as to the integration between psychology and spirituality. And I present a new paradigm for the essence and the nature of the psyche. Because till now, there's no explanation. What is psyche? The psyche, what is made of? So with, without Introducing the spiritual aspect, the spiritual realm, we have no explanation about the psyche. 
I, I describe a new model for stress, new, new theory about the stress, a new theory about the relationship between psychological conflicts and physical diseases. So I presented a new mind-body model where the psycho psychological aspect has become the main thing in medicine. And I describe different mechanisms how and why in the same organ we can have different diseases. And if in the stomach we have cancer, for example, why we have different kinds of cancer in the stomach? Despite the fact that there is one conflict that, for example, in the stomach, we have unexpected conflict that the person could not digest the event. So we we'll block in the stomach. However, and sometimes we will have ulcer, and other times we have gastritis. In other occasions, we will have cancer. And the cancer could be adenocarcinoma, for example, or mucosarcoma or lymphoma. Where all these differences came from? Right now in medicine, we have no answer about this because we don't understand what is cancer actually. And we attribute the, the ulcer, for example, for the, the bacteria. And the bacteria is as the cause of the ulcer, but at the same time, we know that the bacteria cannot attack healthy mucosa of the stomach. So we, uh, we don't understand why four or five persons that they have iliobacter in, the, in their stomach, they don't have ulcer. So we have a lot of questions without answers in medicine. And I presented a new method. If we will have enough time in the, in the end, I will present you this, the energy washout, which is the way how to intervene to um, release the blockages, the energetic blockages, and to complete the learning process. At the same time, I published different articles in physics because universal theory, that means that we should use the same theory in physics and in psychology and in spirituality. Here, for example, I present a new theory about the electron and I found that the electron is not a cloud without shape. It's not a point without shape, but is a vortex. And as a vortex, I calculated all the characteristics of the electron, uh, considering the electron as a vortex. I, I brought a new theory about the relationship between wave and particle duality. And I described the origin of the magnetic constants. By the way, there is no explanation about the physical constants in general. So the, element, the, the, the elementary constants, so the fundamental constants in physics has no explanation. So there are numbers that have been to be inserted in the equation in, in order to have the right answer. Here I bring another a new mechanism of gravitation. And uh, all these articles in, it was published in um, peer reviewer and physical uh, uh, journals. And here I bring something that's completely new, that the gravitation is not something that we have from inside that attract to the Earth. Gravitation is a force of pushing from outside to inside. So I describe this mechanism as a vortex as well, the same mechanism of the electron. Another constant, the G, the constant G of gravitation, I found the um, origin of this constant. And by the way, all this information I, because I didn't uh, study uh, physics at all, but all of this information I could have from the spiritual realm, from the uh, Akashic uh, library. And we have all the information there. Once you have 
the uh, password to enter to that library. You can have whatever kind of information that you desire. Here are the constant that's very important, the fine structure constant that nobody, you can just open Google and you find about the nature of the constants and you will find there's no explanation at all in physics about these constants. So from all this theory, I can uh, summarize the uh, unified integrative medicine as one medicine that integrates the best of both worlds, high technology with high touch, tender loving care with personal attention, focuses in, in health and healing rather than disease and treatment. It views patients as a whole humans with physical body, psyche and soul and include this dimension in the diagnosis and treatment. It also involves patients and doctors working to maintain well-being by paying attention to lifestyle factors such as diet, exercise, quality of rest and sleep, sexuality and relationships, which mostly are neglecting, neglected in medicine. So we can look at the component of the human being is very simple as four, four of four percent of our reality in the body, 23% of our reality in our psyche, and 73% of our reality is in the soul. Now, in the, in the article that I introduced, the uh, uh, I make integration between spirituality and psychology. Actually, I described the three parts of the psyche, as I will show you, the id, ego, and superego, that has no explanation in psychology. And the, inter the interaction between the energy and information of the soul, where the brain produces the psyche. So there's no psyche without brain, and there's no psyche without soul. And we have the relationship between psyche and soul and body, exactly the same relationship that we have in the equation of Einstein, E equal MC squared, where the E energy is the soul, and the C squared is the psyche, and the mass is the body. So the soul is made of energy and information, while the body is the physical and matter. So uh, when we are speaking about a holistic model, Actually, these three parts, psyche, body, and soul, cannot really be separated for practical or theoretical purposes. They are interconnected. And the disturbance in one level, somatic, psychic, or spiritual, will radiate to all other levels too. Exactly as you can see here in this equation, if you lose a lot of energy in, in, on the body, it will be in the count of the psyche. And if you lose a lot of energy on the psyche, like for example, during conflicts or stress will be at the count of the body. So the body will be weak and the disease will appear. So we can say that there's no really life without soul. And every human being presents a biological complex subjected to the energetic forces and information that guides physiological, genetic, metabolic, and psychological functions. These forces are called soul. So the soul is nothing else but the energy and information that animate the physical body. However, the soul is divided in three parts. The first part is the magnetic force heredited from our parents named animal soul. This magnetic field, I call magnetoelectric field. It's made of the emergence of all the electromagnetic field of the cells and of the tissues together will be emerged in one field that this is the magnetoelectric field, which is called animal soul. While 
we have the second part is a quantum state joined to the body at, the, at birth named human soul. And this is the part that distinguishes the human being from animals. And this is the part that gives us the consciousness and gives us the possibility to think about our thoughts. And the third part is quantum state joined to the person at the moment of name attribution named guiding spirit. The guiding spirit actually is something from outside of our nature. And this guiding spirit is the source of our intuition, the source of our creativity and innovation. So when we speak about soul, we, we speak about these three parts together. So we cannot separate between them. However, if you have a animal soul and guiding spirit without human soul, this it could happen during, during uh, sleep or, uh, for example, in, in, in person that they are, um, uh, they are not able to speak. Um, autistic uh, children are without the human soul. They are living, they have the animal soul, Sometimes the guiding spirit could possess the body and become Asperger. So its spectrum is highly functioning spectrum. However, it's very limited in one thing, and this is called Asperger. The animal soul actually is the magnetic field, which is called biofield or morphogenetic field that guides the anatomic structures and the physiological functions. So the animal soul actually is present, uh, is, uh, in, we can find it in all animals, contains all the animal instincts and emotion actually. So because this is the cause of life and emotion, and this part that has the fear to die, because actually can die, okay? The human soul is energetic in material. We can see, we can say uh, that this is information or quantum state, which is the source of consciousness, identity, transcendental wisdom, and spark of light. The real essence of the human being is this part. The part that come to make the, the uh, incarnation, this is the human soul. The one that is speaking with you right now is the human soul, because animal soul does not speak. And the guiding spirit is outside of our body. And this is the reason why it's called spirit. So we can distinguish between spirit and soul. When the spirit animates the body, it will become soul. So when we say guiding spirit, that means that this spiritual entity is outside of our body. And when the human soul animates the physical body, will be the spring of love and compassion which searches for meaning, purpose, and truth in life. The guiding spirit is in dependent quantum state too, which is the source of intuitive intelligence, morals, and religion, which researches for beliefs and values. So these three parts of the, uh, uh, the, the soul, if we take the animal soul is divided in three parts as well. Vegetative soul, which is made of two poles that I call them major poles and magnetic field. And this is present in all plants. For this reason, it's vegetative soul. And the second part is the sensitive soul, which is made of seven chakras which are related to seven endocrine glands. And from these chakras, we perceive the reality, the subtle reality, and is divided in seven chakras, and each chakra is related to one aspect of our life. 
And the third part of the animal soul is the intellectual part where the information that introduced in our system will be elaborated according to its frequency in different meridians, in different organs. So what I found out that each one of these chakra can be blocked due to very specific conflict. And each one of these meridians can be blocked due to very specific conflict and trauma. So when we have energy blockages, it's not enough to open the energy blockage. It's not enough to make acupuncture. It's not enough to make Reiki and to open the chakras. Because behind this, we have psychological conflict or trauma. And behind the psychological uh, 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 conflictual trauma, we have the uh, potential for learning process. So I don't want only to elaborate the psychological aspect. I want to complete the learning process and to let the soul to evolve and to grow. And this is a real, uh, a real action of the intervention. Now, when we are speaking about the vegetative soul, actually we can see here the magnetic field and we can see the major poles and you can see that are in the opposite direction in the male relative to the female. And this make the magnetic field behave exactly like um, the magnets. And you can understand the origin of sexual attraction, which actually is like two magnets that are in the opposite direction, where from the positive pole, the energy goes out, out into, in, in, in the, um, from the sexual part of the male and enter in the, in the negative pole of the female. And from the chest of the female goes out to the chest of the male. So normally, the male knows to love the female sexually. And the female knows to love the male emotionally from her heart. And these are two kinds of love that are completely different and create a conflict between males and females because females, they want that the, the male love them exactly as the way that they love the male and it's not uh, possible. Many could say that what I'm saying is not scientific because there's no evidence, no scientific evidence of this. But I can tell you that we have a device which is named SQUID, Superconducting Quantum Interference Device, and which is able to measure the magnetic field without any connection from outside till the point that we can make magnetocardiogram, magnetoencephalogram, magnetoretinogram. So we can um, have information from the magnetic field about what is happening inside the physical body. So we have uh, a lot of progress in this, in this field, how to um, uh, read, actually read the magnetic field, read the animal soul because contain information. All the information that we have in the magnetic field that does not interact with the brain, we call it unconscious, unconscious mind. This is the device, it's expensive, about one and a half million dollars and it's a few hospitals in the world till now. Um, it's very uh, sensitive. So when they make the, uh, the test, uh, the examiner or the doctor should be outside the room because the same uh, device could uh, perceive the energy of the, uh, the, uh, the doctor. So here we have uh, how the soul interact with the brain to produce the psyche and the three parts of the psyche. So this model has been published and uh, explained uh, very uh, simply that 
uh, actually, we can understand that the interaction between the animal soul with the brain produce the id and the emotional part. The interaction between the human soul and the brain produce the ego and the rational mind. While the interaction between the guiding spirit and the brain produce the super ego, intuition, and the moral. And this is the article where it was published and you can uh, have a deeper um, looking on the, uh, on the paper to have more information. Now, what is the principle that guides the interaction between the soul, psyche, and body? And what we uh, find out that the wave inter interference principle is the base because uh, our physical body is made of energy. And the energy of the magnetic field is energy. And when we have interference, could be destructive wave interference, or constructive wave interference. If the waves are in the same frequency or the same phase, they will sum to produce a, a, the sum of the two uh, waves. While if we have a destructive wave interference that are in the opposite direction, the opposite phase, and that will, one wave will cancel the other wave and the energy will go and will be canceled completely. So we have different grades of interference, destructive and constructive wave interference. And this is actually the principle of resonance and dissonance between the magnetic field and the physical body. And to have some idea about the, the, the um, action of the energy on our physical body, you can see it here, it's just vibration of the speaker with the scratch and water, and you can see actually it's constructing figures and three-dimensional figures. It seems like animal that interacting between them, but there's nothing there, only vibration without information. You can imagine that this is a vibration without any information, and you can see how it can guide the formation of structures and things that are intelligent and interacting between them. So this is, you can imagine now that we have information that is in coherence and has information inside. So, so this is the information of the soul that guides the physical body. So we come back to the health as it was defined by the World Health Organization, who uh, uh, defined health as a state of complete physical, mental, and social, spiritual. The spiritual, I added myself, because it's, it's, there's lack of this, uh, 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 the spiritual dimension in the original uh, definition. So it's uh, physical, mental, social, spiritual will be, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. And what we are doing actually in medicine, we want only the absence of disease or infirmity. We didn't understood actually, we didn't understand that uh, the real uh, health is the state of complete physical, mental, social, spiritual well-being. And when we speak about well-being, we can define well-being as state of mind in which the person feels able to realize his projects in life with the sense of love, happiness, and freedom. So if we, if we want to prevent the disease, we should make everything possible to realize and to give this sense of fulfillment in life. And this will give the sense of well-being. Now we can go more profoundly and we can define health taking in consideration the three aspects of the human the mind, of humankind is the uh, psyche and soul and physical body. So if these three parts are in the state of resonance, so we have resonance between the physical body, mind and soul, in which the defense system, the vitality of the body, the resilience, 
is able to cope with external and internal stimuli that could be harmful in an efficient way to maintain the state of homeostasis. So you can imagine that health we ha has two components. The one is resonance, and the other we have enough energy to, uh, to cope with all the stimuli that could take away from the uh, equilibrium. So you can imagine this, Im this image here on the right side, and this is a state of harmony, and you can see that there is relationship between the colors of the uh, aura or the colors of the magnetic field and the colors of the chakras. This is state of resonance. When we speak about homeostasis, this is universal principle. It's this dynamic balance due to resonance between the psychospiritual energetic field and the physical body in which the system functions properly with the minimal energetic consumption. So the right thing is the thing that flow easily without consuming a lot of energy. If we compare love to hate, we understand here that love is constructive wave interference. Love is radiating, strengthening, unifying force, moving towards the central point of oneness, while hate or absence of love is the absorbing, disintegrating, weakening force, absorbing energy away from the central point of the oneness and compartmentalizing it. So we can understand here that we have a physical principle that we can describe love and hate. At least we can describe the effect of love on the physical body using the principles of resonance and dissonance. We can describe happiness or define happiness as an expansion of consciousness due to resolving challenging in life. So each time that you um, uh, overcome an obstacle, each time that you are succeeded in the examination, each time that you increase your knowledge and you feel that you are able to be more useful for more people, and you are doing things with love and freedom, you will feel that you are happy. So the happiness is a state of expansion of consciousness. Your consciousness is, you can imagine this cloud around yourself, which is a state of information that when expands, you feel happiness. The happiness is the result of doing something for, from inside to outside, while the pleasure is taking something from outside to inside. And this is the difference between happiness and uh, between uh, pleasure. So we have different factors that influence the health. We have vitality and we have stress. So, uh, by knowing this, in order to maintain the state of well-being, we take in consideration different factors that can influence the vitality and influence the, uh, the influence the resonance or dissonance. And we can understand here that we have vitality and stress. These are two factors that influence our health. The vitality could be related to genetics. Parents' love, it depends as we will see how much we receive from our parents. The more we receive love, our battery will be charged. From the food, which kind of food we are eating, if we are eating uh, vital food or empty calories food. Physical activity, if it's aerobic, will reduce stress, but if it's anaerobic, will increase vitality. Sleep, very important to increase the vitality. Go to sleep early. Sexual activity, 
as a source of a lot of losing energy. It's very positive when it's well uh, uh, used and uh, you are conscious about the uh, positive part of the sexuality and the influence of environment that can, it depends where you live, the influence of the sun, the influence of the um, uh, weather and all the other environmental influences. And the stress could be uh, related to personality time, psychological conflicts in the past, familiar support, and there's relationship between if you live alone or with a family, if you have social relationship, people that they have a familiar support and social relationship, they are less risk to be in disease. Self-fulfillment is um, when you are self-fulfillment, you will feel that you are satisfied and you have well-being and you are protected from diseases. Physical activity, as I, as I mentioned, the aerobic activity that reduces stress and meditation, prayer, yoga, and other things. So when we speak about spirituality, actually spirituality is everything that we have in life, everything that can influence our growth, spiritual growth. The more I give, the more I expand my conscious, the more I'm rich in my soul. The frequency and the vibration of the soul will increase. And this increase uh, will actually, we can obtain it when we are going to the right path. When we see, when we feel that we are self-actualizing our path. So when you are self-actualizing, actually you, you are connected to yourself and you see that you are taking advantage of your nature and you are behaving according to who you are. And here, the, the second question, I want to understand, if I know who am I, I can understand what I should do in my life. And I didn't do, I do not do things that are not corresponding to my nature. Now, I mentioned the, the uh, major poles actually, and each pole is made of three vortices. And this is another this discovery that I did in the magnetic field. Because in physics, the magnetic pole has no structure. And what I found out that uh, the uh, uh, magnetic pole is made of three vortices. Each vortex could be like the water, vortex of water, which take from outside to the center, or from like tornado, which take from apex and goes outside. So we consider the tornado as positive male, destructive, while the water is constructive male from outside to inside okay the the female the female is negative and the male is positive so if each one of these vortices can be one of these pole, uh, these vortices we have eight possibilities of combination in each pole each system has two poles if each pole is, has eight possibilities, both poles, we have 64 possibilities. These 64 possibilities, actually, this is the mind of God. God thinks using the universal code. And this code is present in our genetic code, which is made of 64 codons. The same codes, the Chinese culture, they use it in I Ching, which is made of 64 uh, hexagrams. And the same uh, code is used in the uh, information, in the formation of the uh, computer, actually, uh, that using the 64 or multiple uh, or divided of the 64. And we said 64 mega, 
or 128 mega or giga. We don't use another numbers. Now we can understand here that the differentiation of the cells when it achieve, when arrive to the phase of the morula, which is made of 64 cells, which are stem cells. That mean that they have exactly the same genetic code, they have the same proteins, and they have everything the same. However, they are located in different place. And if we see, if we can look to the magnetic field, you can see that we have gradient from the positive pole to the negative pole. And the location of the cell will be influenced by one of these 64 code. So we'll activate a part of the genetic code and the other part will be inhibited. So the cells will be differentiated because different parts of the genetic code will be uh, expressed. This is the epigenetics. The epigenetics is the information is on, on the top of the genetic that influence and guide the expression of the genetics. So this, whatever system that has magnetic field, and there's nothing that has no magnetic field, can be expressed by one of these 64 uh, codes. So if we look to the human poles here, each one I mentioned that is a charge from the love that we receive from our parents. However, we didn't receive the same amount of love from both. Sometimes we have more from our mother, other times more than our father. So we have four possibilities of combination, as you can see here. We have both poles positive, one positive and one negative, one negative and one positive, and both are negatives. And you can see this on the face. So from the face, you can understand how much male or female energy each one has. 